Hi guys, in this video we're going to be learning about hash maps. Hash maps in Java allow us to store data and they implement the interface map. This interface brings with it a set of functionality that we can make use of. As we discussed in a previous video, storing data can also be done in the form of an array list and that implements the list interface and that brings with it a set of its own functionality. The key difference between a hash map and an array list is that an array list simply stores a list of objects, whereas a hash map stores data as key value pairs, in other words, an ID and a name, or a name associated with a telephone number. And the other key point of a hash map is that it cannot contain duplicates of the key. In other words, you couldn't have two items within a hash map that contain the same key of, say, one. So let's start by declaring a hash map. So we're going to type out hash map integer string within the angle brackets and I simply imported the hash map here. We're going to call it names and that is going to equal a new hash map. So this list is going to represent student names with an associated ID. So the ID will be an integer and the name will be a string. I'm just going to call that student names. The next thing we're going to do now that we've declared the hash map and we've initialized it we're going to add data to the map. So we're going to do student names dot put. If you remember from the array list, you use add here. So that's the key difference between a hash map and an array list. Array list, you use add. For a hash map, you use put. We need to provide it with a key. So I'm simply going to give it an ID or a key of one and a value. So I'm going to call it Amir. And as my cursor's at the end of the line here, I'm simply just going to do command D several times and that will allow me to copy the line and paste it onto the next line below. So we've got five names here. So we need to alter the keys because as we said, it can't contain duplicates. So we've got one to five. I'm gonna change the names here. So John, Rebecca, Emily, and Jane. So we've got five student names that have been populated within the map. The next thing we're gonna do is print out each of those into the console. And to do that, we're going to use a for loop. So for map.entry, because that's the type of each of these values within the hash map. I'm going to call it entry colon student names dot entry set. And the entry set is basically the list. And if I command D and hover over entry set, it will tell me what it returns. And you can see here it returns a set of map entry and that map entry is of type integer string, in other words, representing our key value. So essentially it's a list of entries and these entries refer to each student and that entry includes an ID and an A. So we'll do open, close, curly braces and then, and then within the body of the for loop here, we're gonna type out S out, which is our shorthand for system out print line. And we're simply going to do entry dot get key and the key is the ID, we're going to plus, so this is our concatenator, we're going to add a colon here, so this is just our visual separator in the console that you'll see, to separate the ID and the name, and then we'll do entry.getValue. So if I start the application now, hopefully we'll see each of the IDs associated with the names printed out. So I'm just gonna play the application, and you can see here, right underneath application.main, We've printed out each ID and each name. Now let's say we want to remove one of those. So if we imagine that one of these students has is no longer a student. So we want to remove their entry in this map. So we simply type student names dot remove. And you can see here that there's two different options. So IntelliJ suggests we could, that we can either remove it by its key or we can remove it by key value. So we're going to remove it by its key. And we've got keys here of one to five. So let's say that we, if we wanted to remove Rebecca, then we'd simply do remove key three because she has an ID of three. The next thing we'll do is I'm going to copy these three lines and then we're going to print out the contents of the hash map again so that we can see that Rebecca has been removed. And I'm just going to do a comment here. So that's just two forward slashes and I'm just going to type remove, just so it's clear that this part of the code to show the remove method on the hash map. So I ran the application again, and you can see here that 
we've now got them all together. So what we can do here is simply, just underneath the printout statements for the first time it does it, we're going to just print out a few star symbols, just so it separates this set of printout statements to this set of printout statements. And run the application again. So you can see here, our first one had five, and our second one has a one, two, four, and five. So we've lost Rebecca. Now let's say that we'd like to replace a particular student. So we've got four left at this point here. We've got Amir, John, Emily, and Jane, because as we said, we've lost Rebecca at this point. So let's say for some reason, Amir decides to change his name to Bob. Unlikely, but let's go with that. So what would we do in that case? We'd simply type out student names dot replace. So we've got the options here. As we start typing it out, we can see to replace values here. So we're going to go with the first one and that requires a key and a value. First we have to tell it which one we want to replace and we, we said that we're going to replace Amir and we know that Amir has a key of one. So we provide the key of one and the next argument to the replace method is what we want to replace it with. So we're going to type out the new name and we said it'd be Bob. So again let's add another for loop here so we can print out the new values. And also, let's not forget to include a printout statement just after the previous for loop so that we have that separation. Let's run the application again. And you can see now that on our third set of printout statements here, instead of Amir, we've got Bob. And Rebecca is st has still disappeared. So student with ID3 is still disappeared because it's still part of the same code. So we're still running the remove method we're still adding all the data, we're still removing Rebecca, and now we've replaced Amir with Bob. So now we're at the point where we've got Bob, John, Emily, and Jane. Now imagine to this list, we're gonna add another four students. So I'm going to type hash map, integer, string, and I'm gonna call it new students equals a new hash map. And then we're going to type out new students dot Put. We're going to give it an ID of 6 and we'll give it a name of James. And as we did before, we're just going to hit Command D at the end of the line here and then we can duplicate the line a few times. We're going to change these IDs so it's 6, 7, 8 and 9. Now let's change the names. So we've got 4 with James, so the second one we're going to type out Callum. The third one will be Amanda, and the final one will be Matt. So we've got our existing list here of Bob, John, Emily, and Jane. And what we're going to do is add every single one of the new students into the existing list and print out that existing list. So underneath, we're going to type out student names dot put all, and we can't do put because put means that we're only going to add one. So we're adding one entry into the hash map. But what we can do as part of the map interface that the hash map implements, and of course, as we said, we'll talk more about interfaces in a later video. But for now, the hash map has the functionality to add everything from another hash map. So we're going to use put all new students. And then again, we're going to print out the contents of the student names map. And as we said before, we're going to do a system out print line with some star symbols just to space things out and make it a little bit easier to read. So let's run the application. And you can see here our final one. We have Bob, John, Emily and Jane. And then we have James, Callum, Amanda and Matt, all as part of the same map. One final thing to demonstrate here is the fact that hash map cannot contain duplicates. So let's try and add a new entry into the hash map with a duplicate key. Right underneath the for loop, we're going to type out student names dot put, and we know that Amanda, for example, has an ID of eight, so we're going to try and import a new entry into the map with a key of eight. And we know that hash maps can't have duplicate keys, so let's see what happens here. We're gonna provide it with a value, so we're gonna give it a whole new name, and we're gonna say Edward, and as before, we're going to print out the contents of the map again. And we need our star symbols just to separate it. So let's run the application again. 
So you can see here on our final printout of the contents of the hash map that we now have an entry with a key of eight and a name of Edward. It's not done what you might have expected it to do, which is to add another entry into the hash map. It simply replaced an existing entry with a key of eight and its new value, rather than simply adding to the end another name of Edward with that same key of eight. So that's everything for this video. Thanks very much for listening. I really hope you found it useful. And if you did, please don't forget to leave a like and subscribe.